Let's breathe air, a joint initiative by AHPI, Times Foundation and SHARP. The objective of this project is to create awareness about the air that we breathe and how effectively we can benefit by breathing better quality of air and how we can improve the quality of the air. And One of the very important aspect of the air that we breathe is the volume of air that we are breathing. We breathe about 11,000 liters of air every day. And did you know that out of the total volume of air that we breathe, 90% of the air that we breathe is in indoor environment. When I say indoor environment, it is the air which we breathe within the four walls. When I say outdoor, I mean to say the air which we breathe under the sky. So if you do a calculation yourself, you will see that most of the air that we breathe is in our home, office, school, automotive or any other company. Now the big question is, what is the quality of the air that we breathe indoor? A very well saying, old standard, gold standard. If you go back 30 years from now, the way we have grown up with, the kind of homes that we used to stay in our childhood, they were very airy and ventilated. There were a lot of sunlight also. But the kind of homes that we build today, because of our energy efficient mindset, we have reduced ventilation drastically, thereby have increased proliferation of microorganisms and odor retention. We would say that the primary cause of the air that is polluted indoor are no direct sunlight, air conditioned environments, less ventilation and the kind of furnitures which we use. If you look at this aspect in a little detail, sunlight plays a very very important role in sanitizing the surfaces of our homes, be it the floors, be it the cushions, be it our bed, anything. As you very well know that there is no sunlight, almost no sunlight in the homes that we build today. Less ventilation is another problem today. While the air is not ventilated, while the air is being locked, let me give you a very small example here. When we go for a holiday and when we come back, when we enter our home, what is the first thing that we do? We, you guessed it right, we immediately open our doors and windows because when we enter from outdoor, we feel the home to be very suffocating and stale and it becomes very heavier to breathe. So for the first thing which we do is open the doors and windows. When we open the doors and windows, we are accepting that the indoor air is more polluted than outdoor. Now let us come to the third aspect, third contributor which is furniture. The kind of furnitures which we had 30 years back and the kind of furnitures which we use today. There is a large difference. They were, they were much more airy, there were, there, there were no boxes, they were open it was easily possible to be cleaned but the furnitures which we use today they are either wall mounted or floor mounted box beds so these furnitures actually have become the breeding ground of all kind of microorganisms and they have started holding the VOCs which are generated continuously in our homes either from the paint or from the varnishes or from the carpets or from the household chemicals which we use starting from cleaning solutions to even mosquito repellents. Since we have, not, we have not provided sufficient ventilation, it has become necessary to install air conditioners. It is very important to know that the air conditioner can only cool the air. 
by recycling the same air. There, there is absolutely no dilution of the air possible in an air conditioner. Except that if you have a centrally air conditioned system where you are allowing some air to be brought into the office space. Otherwise, a normal split and air conditioner which we use in our homes, they are absolutely, absolutely recycling the same air. So, as a matter of fact, the air which we breathe is being recycled again and again. The infections, the microbes, the VOCs, the pet dander, the dust mites, each and everything is floating around the air that we breathe. Let us now take an example of a water pipe. As you know very well that if you are supplying polluted water through a water pipe, what is the kind of damage which will happen to the inside walls of the water pipe? Yes, you guessed it right. There will be corrosion and there will be rusting and there will be contraction of the pipe because of accumulation of all these harmful pollutants inside the pipe. Now, the pipe there is a similar pipe in our body also. It is called the airway pipe. It starts from our nasal cavity and ends till the lungs. This pipe is very very sensitive among children. Even adults, especially children, because as soon as a child is born, the first thing which the child gets exposed to is the air. And as soon as the air that is inhaled by the children, there is similar kind of damage which starts happening in the airway pipe of children. Now let us take a very small example here. This is a healthy airway with a standard diameter of the pipe. Now so the volume of air can pass very easily and go to the lungs. Similarly. As I have explained to you in the water pipe example, that there will be, because of the pollutants which we are breathing along with the air, these pollutants will start settling down in the airway pipe, thereby contracting the airway muscle. With the contraction of the airway muscle, the gap in the airway muscle will get reduced. So it is kind of a short breath situation, so the volume of air which is necessary is not going in. So the first kind of disease which a child comes across is breathlessness. This situation is very very common in children. Why? Because the volume of air that we breathe is in our indoor environment and that the air which we breathe is not at all clean. So the third level is very very dangerous where the accumulation of the pollutant is so much that the contraction of the muscle is very heavy thereby reducing the gap substantially. This situation is a situation wherein people can get an asthma attack. So now let me take one more example. Now let's say we have two pipes. One wherein we supply polluted water all 24 hours a day. The second wherein we supply polluted water 12 hours a day and fresh water balance 12 hours a day. According to you, which pipe will have more damage? Yes, you thought it right. The pipe wherein we have all 24 hours polluted water will have more damage. Similarly, the question now is how we can reduce the exposure. If we are able to reduce the exposure to the pollutants through this pipe, the risk can also be reduced. So, let us now see how we can reduce the exposure to these kind of pollutants for at least 12 hours a day, thereby reducing the risk of damage to the airway pipe. One more very important thing which I want to tell you is that 90% of the diseases which are caused today, especially in children, are due to the damage of the respiratory pipe only. If you come to this slide, you will really see that most of the diseases, sinusitis, asthma, allergy, throat infection, common flu, cold, bronchitis, whooping cough, you name it, any disease which, a com which commonly a child faces in an urban environment, 
are related to only the respiratory pipe. And let me tell you one more very important thing. The respiratory pipe is something which can actually be improved, which can actually be repaired. But once the damage starts happening to the lungs, it is irreparable and irreversible. Now let us see okay, what are the various kinds of pollutants that surround us in our indoor environment. As you can see from this, we have categorized the type of air pollutants into five different segments. The first segment is, I mean dust, smoke, pollen and pet dander. The second category of problem are smelly substances and non-smelling substances. As you know, there are some gases which we can feel, there are some gases which we can't feel. Both of them can cause equal damage to us. Now let me give you an example, let's say ammonia, very common in toilet and sweat, we can feel that. But carbon monoxide is something which is very very deadly which we can't feel. Similarly there are various volatile organic compounds which we use in our day to day life. Cleaning agents, mosquito repellents, perfumes, sprays, all kind of things. Everything has got some volatile organic compounds. The third category is a very important category, static charge. Wherever there is static charge in a room, it will create all those particles which are floating, floating around, the tiny particles to get attracted towards it. So static charge will enable all these particles to get attracted to the furnishings and remain there tem permanently. So they can't be removed even with a vacuum cleaner. The category 4 are mainly the microbes, the infection causing substances which are around us because of lack of sunlight and lack of cleaning to e in each and every corner of our homes. Let me give you an example. When, whenever, there is a, whenever there is a mold or a fungus in our homes, we can see that, we can feel that. But there are many infection causing substances around us which we can't feel. The category 5 of the problem is heaviness in the air. The main cause of heaviness in the air is less ventilation and no ventilation. For more details on these categories and how the air that we breathe is causing damage to us, I would request you to please visit www.letsbreatheair.com or give us a call at 1-800-4254-321. Our air quality expert will get in touch with you.